I'm asked, I like it if I don't want everybody to see where Okay, we're, li we're live, so. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to welcome you to the Dade County Weekly Update. Thank you so much for joining us today on New Year's Eve. Uh, remember, you can type your questions in the comment section during the live update. And if you don't want to ask your question during the live update, um, you can always email us at info at dadecounty-ga.gov. Thanks for coming to the right place for the right information. Today, we only have two people on today, so you'll be hearing from me, Carrie Anderson with Dade County, and um, Robert Goff, who is Commissioner and Vice Chair for Dade County Board of Commissioners. If you know someone who would be interested in hearing from any of our guests today, go ahead and invite them to watch this live broadcast or start a watch party so you can hold your own discussion. Remember that you can also watch this later on Facebook or YouTube and sharing the links to our videos is super easy. The reason we're having only a few people today is we did have an exposure in the office, so we are following all protocols and we are trying to, to social distance and wear masks and keep people at home if they can work from home. So we did want to mention that and that is why you only have the two of us today. I also want to remind you to check for upcoming events at dadecounty-ga.gov. So that's our website with our calendar. We would also like to congratulate all of those who were sworn into public office Tuesday. Those were uh, Coroner Courtney Gross, Deputy Coroners Ansel Smith and Sandra Gray, Tax Commissioner Angie Moreland Galloway, and Clerk of the Superior Court Kathy Page. This is also a reminder that county offices and the Recycling and Waste Station are closed tomorrow for New Year's Day. The Dade County Board of Commissioners Administration Office building will be open next week. Commissioner Goff will tell us a bit more about that in a moment. From us to you, Happy New Year. Commissioner Goff. Thank you, Carrie, not only for today, but for doing this each week, keeping our web page up to uh, par as well as we can. And thank you who are listening today and anyone who may watch later. I have a few things to cover. I know, first of all, I, I'll cover two things that I did on the uh, uh, TV this morning. First of all, continue to remember the family of Doug Anderton. I'm sure by now if uh, that you have heard Doug passed away. And uh, m most people in Dade County, you know, he had a great resume, not only in Dade County, but through the water authorities. Uh, he served as president of the uh, National Water Authorities or Water Resources and also the state. Um, Doug passed away. Remember his family for 48 years. I think he was uh, working with Dade County Water, so he retired only a year, year and a half ago. So uh, keep Janice and uh, all the family in your prayers. Also, we want you to keep uh, the commissioner, our chairman Ted Rumley. Uh, everyone knows by now Ted did uh, uh, come down with COVID, contract COVID, however you want to put it. Uh, he has not been hospitalized, and he is not hospitalized today. He is weak. Uh, has some coughing and, and um, first one thing and the other going on. I think he, that's his two biggest problems right now is fatigue, which a lot of people that I've known that, that had COVID, uh, especially a couple of friends of mine on the mountain, my, mine and my wife's uh, friends, a man and wife that we have known for many years, both of them had it. Neither was ever hospitalized, but it took them a long time to get over the fatigue once they got over the quarantining and all that stuff that they had to do. So keep Ted, keep Diane uh, in your prayers and in your thoughts. Uh, hopefully he'll be back. I, I don't expect him back next week, but I can't say that he won't be. But uh, keep him in your prayers. Uh, the county offices, I know uh, it was put out on the web the other day that the county office here uh, had been closed, and it had to the public. We have uh, had two people working tirelessly here. They're still here now. Uh, Mary Bailey, who is our HR and uh, payroll person. We have Melissa Smith, uh, who makes sure the bills get paid, and they've been working all week with everybody else uh, uh, quarantined or at least 
staying away, working from home, however we can do it. But the business has gone on, and we uh, want to stress that. Uh, the building has never been closed because we do have an election that's been going on, uh, the early voting in this building. We also have, uh, this is the building where you get, you know, your tags or pay your taxes and other questions you may have for the tax commissioner. And I will join uh, Kerry and, of course, all those folks that were elected, but uh, especially Angie Galloway, who is now our new tax commissioner after about, I don't know, 30-something years that her mom served, as Jane Moreland served, and did a great job and had the greatest respect, I think, and earned the respect of everybody in Dade County and many places in Georgia. But she chose to retire uh, and not run again. And Angie was uh, won the election, was sworn in. So everybody's back in place. Everything's back in place. So I will go over a couple of things. And, uh, of course, I'll be looking down because I've got a lot of bullet points that I want to talk about. Uh, and I'll be giving you some phone numbers. If you not don't have a pen and paper handy, it might be a good time to get them because the phone numbers that we give uh, can save you a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of trouble. Uh, first of all, I did talk to uh, Josh Engel. Josh is our interim uh, superintendent. Most of you may know that uh, Jan Harris, Dr. Harris, has been, has been on here uh, quite a few times during this COVID thing and giving reports for the school system. But uh, I had heard this morning through another person that school would be starting back next week. I wanted to call... Uh, uh, Mr. Engel, and make sure I heard it straight from him as the interim superintendent. And uh, please understand, as he put it, and as we're having to say a lot these days, it is what we're going to do as of now. Now, so as of now, the schools are expecting for the teachers to go back next Tuesday and Wednesday, and then the students will go back on Thursday. And, of course, Friday, if everything works out, and we hope to do, the numbers that they watch, the numbers that the state watches and the county watches have gone down. And uh, we're trying to get back, and hopefully 2021 will get us back to some semblance of normalcy uh, in our school system, our government, our, our county offices here, sheriff's department, superior court, all the places that you have to depend on to, uh, to get your needs met and, and everything. So we're trying to get that back as soon as we can. But I will assure you that we're doing everything we can, as Kerry said, uh, only a couple of us in here because we are doing our best. We're wearing the mask. We, uh, we have hand sanitizer set up for anyone who enters this building uh, for you to wash your hands and, uh, and, and clean your hands and sanitize your hands. We're sanitizing this building after every shift uh, and before uh, anyone comes in in the morning. It's all been sanitized in as much as the spraying and, and all that goes, and we're doing our very best to make this as safe an environment as you can have. Uh, as I said, we haven't been closed down to the public, but we have only had a couple of people working here, uh, and people have not been able to come and go and uh, as they maybe once did, just uh, casual walk-ins. <clears throat> we hope to get that back because that's something we, we enjoy doing. Uh, I know Ted does. If he's here and you come by and just want to chit-chat, he wants to. He, his door, when he says open-door policy, uh, it's exactly what it means. But uh, we, you, when you come into this office, it will be a little different now because uh, actually today, uh, the people who installed uh, the enclosure outside the door that you may be seeing behind me uh, finished the job today. So when you walk into the commission office, you will be met by a glass enclosure with a door in it. Uh, and that is to keep uh, so we can not have so many coming in, coming out. We have a better control over everything. If you, But if you have uh, needing a, for instance, a lot of people come in, I guess one of our main uh, folks is to come in here a lot of times is to get an, ele an electrical permit if someone's building a home, if somebody is put, you know, putting in a trailer, building an outbuilding, whatever, and you have to have that. That is done right here, And but uh, there's a place for it to all be done at the little window up there. So uh, we're doing everything we possibly can. So it will look a little different, and uh, it will look, if you've been in the court system, court's facility, you'll see around where the uh, deputy sits there each day and where you have to check your uh, handbags or put your change and everything through the machine. Uh, it's all been enclosed. If you go into City Hall here in Trenton, it's just, uh, it's the new normal and I don't think we'll ever get away from it. And obviously, when we build it, we're building it to last and we're building it uh, for uh, the rest of time, I guess. That's the way we're going to be. So uh, if you want to come in <clears throat> and just say, if you want to go to Opera Bill and say, and this was all the COVID money uh, that was sent to us by the, first of all, the federal government and then 
uh, down to the states and the states allocated to counties so much. And that this is all part of the money and things that we chose to do. Uh, if uh, Alex Case, our EMA director, uh, was here, he could tell you some of the things that we have done beyond that. Uh, the money has been allocated and it had to be spent for that. And we're doing it, again, as wisely as we can, using it where it'll do the most good. And that is to keep people safe. Uh, so that kind of covers that. A uh, couple of things. Uh, the elections, I will touch on that today. Uh, looking at my watch, it's about nine minutes after three. At 5 o'clock today, 5 p.m. sharp, the early voting will cease. Uh, that will not, they will not be there tomorrow. It's a holiday. They will not be there for the weekend. They will not be there Monday. But on Tuesday, which is now the election day, on December the 5th, you will go to your, your precinct and vote. Uh, I don't know how many have voted. I should have, could have got that number. I know statewide there's been millions of people that have voted. It's a very important election for two U.S. senators, both of our senators in Georgia, as well as a runoff for uh, Bubba McDonald, who is uh, the current incumbent uh, public service commissioner for our part of the state. So, But that will end at 5 o'clock today. Now, Lawana has asked me to tell you that if you requested a ballot, by mail, and you receive that ballot, but you have not mailed it in, and maybe you want to go vote in person, either here within the next hour and 45 minutes or at your precinct on Tuesday. Bring that ballot with you, and the reason is it will save time. It will save a backup log of people because they've got to verify that that ballot was never received in the mail, uh, and obviously we don't want that to happen. Either you don't want that to happen. So bring that ballot with you if you come and you have not mailed it in. If you're dropping them in the box out front of our building that was put there <clears throat> before the general election, if you're going to put them in there, you have till 7 o'clock Tuesday evening to drop that. Uh, and I was told there is no grace period. Uh, if you get there at five at 7.05, they're going to have emptied that. It's going to be on the, the camera that they have gone at 7 o'clock and emptied it, and there will be no more opening that box to see what's in there because they will verify that it's empty. So please, get those in. You've got all week. You can drop that in any time. You can drop it in Sunday afternoon if you want to because the box is out front. It's simply a box like you would drop your mail in at the post office. Uh, many, many, many people have used it. It's a great thing. It's a tool that keeps them, as again, they ordered the uh, or asked for the ballot, ballot by mail, and they were able to receive it, and they could always just come at their convenience and drop it in. But it must be in by 7 o'clock Tuesday, December the 5th, which is Election Day. Uh, I'm going to give you, first of all, a phone number uh, that sometimes, you know, we don't. I don't call this number a lot, and I have to look it up myself, but it is the administration office. It is the building where we're in right now, and uh, a lot of you have it. It's not hard to get, obviously. Uh, 706-657-4625. That, con that gets you to this, and the reason why it's so important nowadays, we don't want people to come down for... Uh, maybe to get their license renewed and you don't know when they're going to be there and you don't know this, that, or whatever, you can give a call and somebody here can help you. But this is also all this information. Uh, Carrie has done a fabulous job to put it on our website about the um, almost anything, and it is updated on a daily basis. And it is when you get in now to it, the, the closures and that kind of thing are one of the first things that you're going to see. Uh, like she mentioned, the... Uh, Transfer station will be closed tomorrow. Uh, it's usually obviously open on, but it is a holiday, and uh, we hope that everybody's home. Uh, please go out and get your hog jaw, your black-eyed peas, and your collard greens, because if we ever needed to do everything, I'm not a superstitious person. I eat it every year. Uh, however, ever since didn't have no choice growing up, that's what was on the table on New Year's Day. My wife went earlier, bought our collard greens, not being a superstitious person, but we need all the help we can get that 2021 turns us around from this uh, thing that we've been in now for a year. We don't know, you know, it's been argued in Washington and everywhere else where it uh, started, uh, when it started. First one, of them, all we know is here, it is here. Uh, Carrie will give, be giving you the numbers later on of uh, our county and uh, maybe some of the surrounding counties around us. Okay. 
Look out Lake Dam. I'm going to say that is finished. Uh, most of it's been reported on several times. County Road 6, with the people living on Sand Mountain, uh, or whether it's a Georgia part of Sand Mountain or uh, over toward Bryan, if you go past Davis School, it's that little short, we used to call it a shortcut. Uh, but it is still under construction and will be till probably uh, through January, maybe February. That was a big undertaking. It was not just putting down some more asphalt on top of asphalt. It was sliding because that doesn't stop the slide. Uh, and it's kind of uh, interesting when you go up and look what they had dug out, how many inches of asphalt over the years had been placed there. So this is hopefully, prayerfully, uh, it will be a permanent fix to that issue in that place. And uh, much like it was on in Burke Alter Gap for the folks on Lookout Mountain, uh, it made a big difference in their commute time, especially from out around the college and there at West Brow. So that's an ongoing process. It will be finished, but it's not going to be finished obviously, in, in this year, but uh, it will be finished as soon as we can get it done, I'm sure. Uh, driver services for 2021 schedule is online. That's where you come here to the uh, Justice Building where the Sheriff's Department is located, and you renew your license. You can find their dates online and other information about them at dadecounty-ga.gov. Now, the dates for January, they will be here the 11th and the 25th, February, they will be here 8th and 22nd. So that's the first two months of the year. And for more, look at that website at dadecounty-ga.gov. Uh, talk just a little bit about our unemployment. Unemployment in Dade County uh, is at 3%. That is up, I was told this morning, just a little tad. But, you know, a lot of things change right at or around Christmas. Uh, but here in Dade County, we're, we're very uh, blessed and we're very happy to report that our uh, people are working. Uh, our businesses are open and been open and people are working. Uh, the uh, commission office, uh, uh, as I said, we will be opening our commission office up to the general public to come in, uh, even though it's not been 100% closed, never. But on Monday, we will be coming back. So you will see somebody at the reception desk and you'll see uh, other people in. Unless there is someone who should, you know, have a reason physically or, or uh, medically not to come in. And uh, so, again, keep in mind, as I said about what Mr. Engel said, this is as of today. This is what we plan to do. Uh, the Sheriff's Office, Dade County Sheriff's Office lobby will be closed and fingerprinting suspended until further notice. That is the Dade County Sheriff's Office lobby. Not that the sheriff's shutting down and he won't be around, but uh, to call about that, we have a number, again, 706-657-3233. If you have uh, anyone needing a, a fingerprinting for whatever, if they're going to be a teacher or work with children, whatever, that will be suspended until further notice. Uh, motor vehicle services are unavailable uh, in, in parts of January, so we've already gone over that. Uh, county offices and recycling, we've gone over that. They will be closed tomorrow, New Year's Day. Uh, election, the Secretary of State, I'll give you a number if you uh, feel you need to call. It's 404-656-2871. Uh, if you have, uh, and this has been on TV, you know, it's kind of odd, the thing we see watching TV at night, but it is if you see there's any, or you feel like there's any evidence of fraud, there's a national number to report that. It's 470 470- 410-8793, 470-410-8793. We've covered the general the election runoff, which will be uh, ending at 5 o'clock today as far as early voting. Uh, you'll have to get there and be uh, in line because they will shut it down at 5 o'clock except those who would be in line. And also, Tuesday, January the 5th, uh, you will go to the polls and vote on for election day, and that is from 7 until 7 o'clock in Georgia. Uh, now, something very important, I think, as today's news, Governor Brian Kemp, Georgia governor, has extended the state of the public health, the state of the public health state of emergency until January the 8th. Okay, so it, there's an extension on it. Now, Concerning the vaccines, it's a lot of people that uh, are waiting on them, I guess, and some that are saying, I don't know where I will or not. That's going to be an individual's, but they are hitting the United States. They're being delivered to counties. They're being delivered to uh, health departments everywhere. They're being delivered to hospitals. They're being delivered to places they can be administered. So 
but he has uh, extended that state of emergency, and he has announced plans. If you're 65 and older, if you're one of me, if you're 65 and older, if you're a law, uh, law enforcement officer, firefighters, and first responders, to the, he has added us to the current group of individuals. That is, 65 and older, law enforcement, firefighters, and first responders are added to the current group of individuals eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine because they are trying to get it into the places where it's most needed and where you're more vulnerable, especially, uh, certainly those in healthcare, those that are in law enforcement that are having to go from place to place, uh, they are all vulnerable, but us older folks obviously are as well, So, but uh, we have been added to that. Healthcare workers and staff and residents of long-term care facilities, which we have a couple here in Dade County, you know, are already in the highest priority group to receive those. The expanded administration of vaccine is expected to begin within the next two weeks, next two weeks, provided there is an adequate vaccine supply available. I know Pfizer's putting one out, Moderna, Moderna if I say it correctly, they've come out with it. It's a two-dose thing. Uh, I don't understand all about it. I have not taken it. Uh, but anyway, we have been at it, and it will be hitting our county uh, if you... Uh, Need to call the health department for any reason, uh, be sure to call them. Don't feel like that uh, that you can't. COVID testing. The drive-through testing is still going on on Wednesdays from 9 o'clock in the morning, 9 a.m. until noon, and then at 12.30 p.m. until 4.30 p.m. here at the uh, lower level of the building that we're in at our Dade County Health Department. The COVID testing number, if you want to call, is 706-657-4213. 706-657-4213. Now, rapid testing. This is a test that beyond what they do every Wednesday. There are several symptoms of contracting this this COVID-19, and some of them are when you, if you lose your taste and smell. Uh, talking to uh, Chairman Rumney the other day, that's, I think, the first thing he noticed was he could not taste food, couldn't smell. Uh, bless his heart, I told his wife to feed him Brussels sprouts and anything now if you can't taste them. So uh, not making fun, but uh, it's I kind of poke at him. And we, we have a good time, a good relationship, working relationship, and a friendship. But uh, that was one of the first things to hit him. He did run some low-grade fever, never anything, I don't think, over uh, 100, but... Those are two of the symptoms, fatigue, uh, just aches and pains like flu-like symptoms. So if you experience any two of these, then you can call and you need to call the health department for a rapid test. That way you don't have to wait until the next day or whenever to find out. But you need to call that number, 706-657-4213, so that you can come down and get that test because it's not uh, they're not going to be lined up out there giving this test. They will on Wednesday, but the rapid test is a uh, individual one at a time as needed. If you feel like that you have it or that uh, just being exposed to it, I don't. I don't think they'll do it. And I was told this the other day downstairs. They will not test you with a rapid test unless you're showing symptoms. So keep that in mind. But now the drive-through on Wednesday, whether you've got symptoms or not, you just say, "Well, I've been around a lot of people. I've been to." Uh, the grocery stores, I've been to the shopping mall, I've been to church, uh, whatever, then you can go be tested for that drive through in your car and never have to get out. Uh, other testing will be held at the following locations. Uh, if you're, say, on the mountain and you, you need to get tested maybe a little closer, location is Catoosa County Health Department on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. That's Catoosa County Health Department. You could Google and find their phone number, I'm sure. Uh, the times are 9 till 12 p.m., 12.30 till 4.30 p.m., mirroring the same times that we do. And also, uh, Mount Zion Baptist Church in Lafayette on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, the same hours, 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., and then from 12.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. And uh, that's all that we have on testing, and that's pretty much all that I've got to cover today. If you call in any questions, we'll do our best uh to answer them, and Carrie will be up here giving some numbers in a moment and answer any questions you may have for her. Uh, but if you do have anything you need to ask me, my phone number is 423-503-0618, 423-503-0618. Uh, 
uh, anytime, day or night that you need something, you have a question, if I can get give you the answer, I'll give it to you immediately. If I have to hunt the answer, I'll get back to you as soon as I can get that answer and get it, uh, because that's what we're here for is to help you. Uh, I'd like again to thank the citizens of Dade County. It's been when we look at COVID and we look at everything that's going on, it's been a terrible year, but it's been a great year. We've learned a lot through it. I think as families, as churches, as schools, uh, as we talked about this morning on the table, we've learned to think out of the box. Uh, we've learned to do things a little bit different, but still get them done. But when it comes down to it, at the end of the day, we're all friends, we're all neighbors, we're all family. Uh, we live, we work, we play, and we worship here in Dade County. This is our home. And God has led us... Uh, I know there's some in our prayers, our thoughts are with them, that lost loved ones, not only to COVID, but to other sicknesses and just uh, the the natural causes in the year. And at this time of the year, especially, you begin to miss that loved one even more. But God has blessed us, and uh, we, just continue, we just continue to pray to Him and be thankful to Him for His many blessings upon us. But especially to the people of Dade County, if you're watching this now or later or whatever, I hope that you have the uh, best New Year's Day, New Year's celebration. Hope your team wins. I hope your peas are just right. I hope your uh, collard greens are just like you like them. Uh, and it is a great day as we start 2021. Get ready to start writing that down because when you write a check, which a lot of people don't do anymore, it's always the hardest thing to remember is to put that correct date on it for about a month or two, and then you get the hang of it. And about the time you get the hang of it, you're almost ready to start another. So thank you again for all that you do as citizens of Dade County, employees of Dade County. If you're watching, our deputies, our first responders, our people, our pocket ambulance people, you name it. Uh, it's been a great year. Uh, COVID's hit several within our uh, government, not only Ted, but some others. And so the other offices have had it, or at least family members of them. So it is real. It's a real thing. But I often think, and I will not try to imitate the way he done it. Some of you are old enough to remember uh, when Franklin Delano Roosevelt said, the only fear we have is fear itself. So uh, live your life. Be careful. Wash your hands. Wear a mask. Do everything you can. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, we just hope God keeps us all safe. And in one year, 365 days from now, we're back saying good things again. God bless you. Have a great New Year's. So here we go with the COVID report. Um, we do have some new statistics courtesy of Johns Hopkins that we wanted to share with you. Um, a couple of people have asked this on and off uh, throughout the, the month. So case statistics currently for COVID-19, 22.9% of uh, cases, COVID positive cases are people between the ages of 18 and 29. So 22.9%, that's the largest group age range is 18 through 29. That's followed by 20.6% of people ages 50 to 64. 16.5% of COVID positive cases um, are of people ages 30 to 39, followed by 15.1% ages 40 to 49, 8.7 ages 5 through 17. I thought that one was pretty interesting because at first, you know, we were told kids probably wouldn't catch it a lot, but 8.7% um, are our children ages 5 to 17, 7.7% of COVID positive cases are people ages 65 to 74, 4.1 ages 75 to 84, 2.6% ages 85 plus. Females account for 52.2% of COVID positive cases and males for 47.8%. Uh, the death statistics look a little bit different with 32.8% of COVID deaths being in the age group 85 plus, followed by 27.3% for ages 75 to 84, 20.8% for ages 65 to 74, and 14.5% for ages 50 to 64, and from there it just goes down. So ages 40 to 49 is 2.9%, 1.2% um, for ages 30 to 39, and 0, or 0.5 for ages 18 through 29. Males account for 53.8% of COVID deaths, females for 46.2% of COVID deaths. So a lot of uh, COVID 
percentages. Just so you know, last week uh, we did tell you that Tennessee was reported number one in the nation for COVID, and it was at that point in time. It has dropped to number two this week, um, and it is only preceded by California, which is in the number one spot. Georgia is somewhere in that teen section, so um, it's a little bit uh, further down, but Tennessee is still number two. So they are watching those numbers very carefully for our neighbors to the north. So as far as um, the COVID numbers for Dade County, Georgia has 558,177 confirmed cases. That's up from 518,902 last week. 708 of those cases are in Dade County. And this is an important thing to, to remember that 708 goes all the way back to March. So 708 cases in Dade County that includes every case that we've ever had in Dade County. That's up from 663 last week. But in the last two weeks, we've gone up by 93 cases. That's really kind of the number that I watch um, and that we watch here. So 93 cases up in the last two weeks. So we know that COVID cases stay active for approximately 14 days, give or take. So 93 cases up in the last two weeks, seven deaths and 38 hospitalizations here in Dade County. In Walker County, 3,743 cases. That's up from 3,420, and it's 525 cases in the last two weeks. Catoosa County has broken the 3,000 mark. They are at 3,185, up from 2,924, and they're up 515 in the last two weeks. Chattooga County is at 1,513. That's up from 1,420, and they're up 170 in the last two weeks. Whitfield County has broken a, a 10,000 mark, so they are sitting currently at 10,690 positive cases in Whitfield County. That's an increase of 1,399 over the last two weeks. So last week they were at 9,993. They are now at 10,690. Gordon County is 4,022. That's up from 3,780, and they're up 419 over the last two weeks. Floyd County, 6,676 positive cases. That's up from 6,205. That is up 698 in the last two weeks. There are 2,866 uh, cases in unknown counties, and that just means they've yet to be assigned to a county. Um, they some of those cases, we believe, come from the homeless population in the state, but 2,866 have not yet been assigned to a county. In the state of Georgia, 9,808 deaths were currently recorded. That's up from 9,503 last week. There have been 41,778 hospitalizations. Since yesterday, in the state of Georgia, we've had 5,496 cases, 49 deaths, and 375 hospitalizations. Moving to our neighbors in the North, Tennessee has 580,809 cases confirmed. That's up from 534,019. That's up 8,220 since yesterday. So that's a pretty big jump, 8,220 in one day um, for the state of Tennessee. Hamilton County has 28,127 confirmed cases. That's up from 25,232 yesterday. 3,916 of those are active, 23,947 are recovered, and 264 are deceased. Marion County has 1,839 confirmed cases. That's up from 1,691. 188 of those are active, 1,626 are recovered, and 25 are deceased. Grundy County has 1,186 confirmed cases. That's up from 1,092. They have 127 active cases, 1,041 recovered, and 8 deceased. In Sequatchie County, they have 1,440 confirmed cases. That's up from 1,037. They have 178 active, 950 recovered, and 15 deceased. Meigs County, 955 active, or, sorry, current confirmed cases. 143 of those are active. 797 are recovered and 15 deceased. Bradley County is up from 8,269 to 8,994 with 1,156 of those being active, 7,766 recovered and 72 deceased. 
In Tennessee, 3,212 people have been hospitalized. That's up 144 since yesterday. The deaths are currently 6,810 in the state of Tennessee. That's up 100 from yesterday. In Alabama, 361,226 confirmed cases were reported. That's up from last week's number of 334,569. 5,097 of those are in Jackson County. That's up from 4,787, with 34 of those being deceased and 580 cases in the last 14 days. DeKalb County sits at 6,690 confirmed cases. That's up from 6,609, with 61 of those being deceased and 753 cases being added in the last 14 days. So those are our COVID numbers uh, we wanted to give you this week. Um, as Commissioner Goff said, Governor Kemp did extend the state of the public health state of emergency to January the 8th, and he is asking that people continue to practice social distancing, wash your hands, and wear a mask. Um, we do have a question, and I'm going to check and see if we have any more, so I'm going to turn this back over to Commissioner Goff. Uh, we did have a question and, and uh, one question so far. There may be others. But the question is from someone listening, why was the KOA road paved before Sligo? Uh, the short answer is money. Uh, every year, Billy's crew works with what they have, the money that they have, and, and to pave uh, roads. And, of course, we have to buy equipment and all that. And a lot of this is done, it's either done out of splash dollars, uh, or uh, some of the general fund dollars, or it's done out of what you heard Commissioner Rumley and others talk about LMIG, which is money granted <clears throat> granted from the state to the counties uh, being used for the roads. It's maintenance and highway maintenance. That can be anything from uh, whatever you need. It could be to build a bridge. If you had a bridge, it had to be rebuilt, or if you had uh, guardrails, anything pertaining to roads. But the uh, other thing to look at is when we talk about Sligo Road, Sligo Road is, uh, I don't know where you're talking about, coming off of what we call Hell's Gap Road, where it makes the turn and comes through Sligo by the KOA Road, or whether you're talking about the entire Sligo Road that goes all the way out and hits 299 uh, there at the Tennessee-Georgia line. But the, 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 the thing is money, but when Billy's been out, he and his crew, uh, they're working on getting as many roads as they can get with the money that they have. Uh, all of our roads, so, you know, some are in more disrepair than others. Uh, if you watched or you were at our last meeting, Commissioner Hartline talked about the uh, paving of Hell's Gap Road and also of Wells Road. Now, Wells Road is a little, again, a shortcut road uh, that comes out just uh, uh, east of Davis School, and people would go through there from that area. They'd go over. They'd go down Hell's Gap Road. Uh, Hell's Gap does need paved, and also the Georgia part of uh, uh, Murphy's Holler that comes off of it there in, in the sharp curve. But the bottom line is they do the most roads, and they get so that one of these days when we're able to get on the larger roads, uh, we have the money to do this. It all comes down to a matter of money. Uh, I'm going to throw something out that we uh, did have uh, – some of you don't want to hear this again, and but you are going to hear it, I'm sure. And with questions like these, it's, you're going to have enough time to research. A lot of times people say, well, we didn't know about it. And what I'm going to talk about is tea sploshed. That's the, uh, like, if, you, if you're if you familiar with the education system, the school system has an E sploshed. Then we have a sploshed, just a special purpose local option sales tax. And then we had a lost, which is local option sales tax. If you go to the store and you buy a product, you pay seven cents uh, tax on the dollar. Three of those pennies, the East Blushed, the Splashed, and the Lost Penny go to our county. That's what we operate on. That's the three that we get. Uh, most of your grocery items, if you'll look, you don't even pay on a lot of your grocery. You don't pay the state's part, but you still are uh, required to pay that 3% and they remit it to the state, state back to the county. And we report on it at every meeting. Uh, thankfully, Splash has been up. But we did have a referendum about, I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago for T-Splash. 
and that was transportation splice, like the E stands for education, the T stood for transportation. It may take in less money because fuel may not be a part of it, but it would take in uh, money every month, just like the splice does. And splice has been up over 200000 except for two months in the last two and a half years, I guess, uh, the money that we're getting in our splice. Now, it may be some less than that, but that was money that could only go for uh, road projects, whether that be paving, building, striping, guardrails, uh, lighting, whatever that was needed, but it failed in Dade County. Uh, it passed in several counties throughout the state. It passed in Walker County. Uh, when we had it on ours, we, we did not pass it. Oddly enough, when it come out the first time, Dade County was the one county out of the region but the, unfortunately, at that time, the whole region had to pass it. It was not a standalone county. So the state says, okay, we will let it be a standalone uh, to your county. You collect it. You get what you get. It won't go to a region and be divvied out among uh, 15 counties. And that's what hurt that one was because everybody thought, well, Whitfield will get more. They've got Dalton. they got Iscatusa will get more. We'll still get little. So, But we still, we voted it in. Dade County of all counties, when the T-Splash first came up, so you don't, may not be the answer that you want to hear, but, you know, short, short answer is it's about dollars and cents. It's using the money that we have allocated to roads. It's using the LMIG money that's given by the state. And then we're always going to have other projects like County Road 6. Uh, we had Burkhalter Gap. Uh, we've got, you know, slides every once in a while here or there. And all those things have to be taken care of. Uh, we had the big tile on New Home Loop. Uh, a few, few years back, that was about a half a million dollar fix. Uh, but we were fortunate that that happened during a flood and we were able to get federal money to hit with that as well as splashed. And when I say splashed, you still have to match anything that the state gives you uh, with a 30% match from the county. So you don't get this money to go. You've got to, every 70 you spend with their money, you've got to put 30 of yours in it. So whoever sent that is it in a nutshell. KOA comes off of Sligo, but it's a much shorter road. Uh, and one of these days, uh, hopefully we'll be able to do like Commissioner Hartline wanted. We'll have the money, but he done some of the math. And if you'll remember, all he talked about was just the paving. He was not talking about all the other expense that goes with it because you've got to have trucks lined up when you're paving a road like that. You've got to have trucks lined up, bringing in the pavement, ready to dump it on the spreader, ready to be put out, pull out of the way, another truck back in. So you've got to, therefore, you hire a lot of people to do it. Uh, it's a wide road. Uh, Sligo is not as wide as Hell's Gap. Hell's Gap, one of our... So when you take the road that you're doing under consideration, you've got to look, are we doing a 14-foot or 16-foot road? We're doing a 20-foot road. Uh, then when it's done, people are going to want striping on it. All that costs money. And striping is ridiculous. I don't know the numbers on it right now, but it's it's ridiculous by the foot. And you're putting down three or four, three or four stripes on every road, two on the side, uh, one in the middle, sometimes two in the middle if it's a no passing or whatever. So uh, that's it. But do some research, whoever this was, do some research on T-Splice uh, that will, will come back at some times. I'm sure it needs to come back, but it needs to be when people have educated. Uh, one person told me, I didn't vote for it. I said, why? Because it said sidewalks. Well, think about it. Trenton will get some of that money. Trenton has sidewalks. And I think if you go to Rising Fund, we even have a sidewalk or two down there. So that's important to a lot of people. If they're walking from their home to the grocery store or whatever, sidewalks are important. Or for years now, people have wanted a sidewalk put in from Larry Moore's funeral home to past the high school and over the creek for the kids to walk on. So there's a lot of people want sidewalks, but because they say, well, they want sidewalks. So that th those kind of things either spur it on or they shoot it down. So do the research because the thing about a splash or a tax like that, if you said no sidewalks are in it and then somebody come up and said, well, we want to do it, do you realize you can't do it? Or if you allocate a lot of money for it, you spend that money, you don't have any more to spend on sidewalks. But at least you've got some in there to do some of the work. But if you don't have it in it, by law, you can't just go out and say, well, we're going to spend this on this, that, or the other thing. So when you vote on a referendum, it does have different things in there. It may be paving, guardrails, striping, bridges, lighting, 
sidewalks, and I don't know what all else could be added to that, but you have to put those things in there. Just like in our splash, we want to put our fire department, our ambulance service, our general administration, our sheriff's department, uh, our 911, all those things have to be in there to be able to receive money. The water company, the library, anything that receives money from Splash has to legally be part of that referendum. So uh, thank you for the question, but begin to do some research on what counties around a walker would be a good place to start. Uh, counties in Georgia that have T-Splashed. And when that passed, when I go back to when I say it, when it first started, there were two regions in the state. They were both down in the, the belt of the state from Savannah across to kind of over to uh, Columbus, but they were they were uh, voted it in by the region, and I'd go to ACCG meetings, and they'd say, we got money coming in, and we've got money to fix our roads, but for whatever reason, we failed to vote it in, uh, so got questions on that, again, my number's 423-503-0618. Thank you, and again, have a blessed and a merry, merry, happy new year. Thank you.